Welcome to the Know, I'm Meg Turney. I'm Ashley Jenkins. What do gamers love more than boxing tycoon simulators with old school graphics and tons of pop culture references? Pirating them, of course. Well, at least that's the case according to a new blog post from Tiny Build Games, publishers of the indie hit Punch Club, a game in which you manage a fighter. In the post, Tiny Build celebrated not only the milestone of 300,000 copies of Punch Club sold, Good but- Good job, guys. Yes, but more interestingly, the milestone of 1.6 million pirated downloads. Wow. Wow, the first rule of Punch Club, don't pay for Punch Club, apparently. I knew we were gonna do Fight Club jokes, you just we, knew. We had to. It's really? Right? Legally required. To. Punch Club, for those of you who aren't uh, familiar, is an indie game that got a bit of popularity earlier this year when the developers allowed Twitch to beat the game ahead of its release for a chance to get the game early. More than 71,000 people tuned in to accomplish this feat in just 36 hours, playing like a well-oiled machine, which is a far cry from Twitch Plays Pokemon. Together, Twitch got a girlfriend, went to jail, and got caught dealing drugs before ultimately prevailing. All in all, a good Saturday night. Story of heroism. Yes. As a reward, Tiny Build released Punch Club early to the pirating masses. Yay! Uh, according to the newly published blog post, Punch Club has been pirated 1.1 million times across its PC versions, including DRM-free versions and Steam QB sellers, plus Mac and Linux versions. The other part of that 1.6 million total comes from mobile, which is responsible for 500,000 pirated copies of the game, 90% of which come from Android. We always knew those Android users were shifty. Looking at you, Funhouse. Mm. Uh, that piracy rate actually matches numbers shared by us two creators of Monument Valley. Last year, they tweeted that just 5% of Monument Valley installs on Android were paid for. 1.6 million pirates is actually pretty staggering when you consider that the game sells for $9.99. That's $16 million worth of pirated downloads compared to the $3 million the game has actually made in sales. Oh, wow. That, I mean, that... Like, putting it in that Ow. kind of context, that hurts me right here. Uh, they just call it Pyro Club at this point, because that's what it is, right? Yeah. But hey, Tiny Build Games doesn't really have any ill feelings toward those pirates. They're it's bigger than I am. Like, millions and millions of dollars, I would. I'd be pretty pissed. Uh, instead, they actually used the opportunity to learn some lessons about what they can do with their next game, and even provided some recommendations for other devs struggling with pirates in the industry. Good guy, Tiny Build. Yeah. You're bigger men than, men than I am. Yeah. Not that that's hard, because I'm short. But anyway, most of what they learned has to do with how they handled localization and on what territorial waters the pirates seem to be occupying. Punch Punch Club appeared on torrenting sites within 12 hours of its initial launch, so they've been collecting data on pirates since the first day it's been out, really. For starters, they learned that the game not being localized for China didn't cause any problems for Chinese pirates who went ahead and downloaded the game at a steady pace from day one. But interestingly enough, adding a Brazilian Portuguese version of the game actually increased the amount of Brazilians pirating the game. The number of pirated versions in Brazil skyrocketed once the newly localized version was created. Waxing pirate games. That's all they do in Brazil. And kidnapping. Yes. In terms of countries who aren't as keen to sail the seven seas, we got a we got a head shake. Got a head gamer. shake. Don't you go there and you get you, kidnapped. Don't you dare take down Brazil. Uh, Germany, the United States, and France don't enjoy the pirate life. They have the highest purchase rate of the game. Good job, everybody. Yeah. Uh, this leads Tiny Bill to conclude that localizing for Western Europe is critical for keeping those areas from taking your precious video game booty. But China and Brazil, they give zero fucks. They've also found that rather than adding more restrictions to the game, they actually should have restricted the title less than they already did. In the post, Tiny Build CEO Alex Nietzsche-Portschick wrote, while it's difficult to fight piracy, and most DRM-enforced ways are horrible for the paying customers, it's hard to deny it has an impact. Looking back, I believe what we should have done is enabled cross-platform saves on launch. This way, people who pirate the PC version may have converted better into buyers on mobile or vice versa. A surprisingly refreshing take on piracy, actually. Uh, especially when you consider that the data shows just how big those pirate numbers are. And instead of getting bitter about the reality of piracy, Tiny Build has chosen to see what they can do in the future to win pirates over. Lots of notable developers have been employing this strategy lately. In an interview with GameSpot last year, CD Projekt Red co-founder Marcin Iwinski detailed how the company first started fighting back at piracy in Poland in the late 1990s. Rather than cracking down and making it harder to crack its games, CD Projekt Red actually created high-end versions of their games that could be bought at flea markets for less than the pirated version. The experiment worked, too. They actually started selling millions of copies at the flea markets. Uh, and interestingly enough, this is how they got the idea to start GOG, which they just consider to be a digital flea market of sorts for video games. They've continued this mindset of embracing pirates with their modern games as well. The Witcher 3 had a day one patch that was available to every version of the game, pirated 
or purchased, along with a friendly post from CD Projekt Red, encouraging people to actually go out and buy the game. Now, that's a pretty big contrast to companies like Ubisoft and others that have resorted to some really restrictive DRM in the past before giving up on it altogether. They went as far as claiming that their PC games have a 95% piracy rate before instituting some of the policies. And we're not advocating for piracy here at all. Nope. But please buy stuff. Support creators. Do the right thing. What we're pointing Be out- Be the hero. Yes. What we're pointing out here is that anti-piracy measures generally don't really have their intended effect. But sadly, some developers just don't seem to learn. IO Interactive, who's causing a little bit of anger with connectivity issues in the new Hitman game, seems to be one of those developers. While the game does allow players to play and save their game in offline mode, offline mode and online mode saves aren't compatible, and you can't progress in offline mode either. What? Who decided that was a good idea? Boo! Ah. To be fair to Hitman, some people think that this is a faulty system for keeping cheaters off the game's leaderboards rather than a form of DRM. There is no way that's worth the leaderboard. Leaderboards aren't that important. Not important enough to break your game. Absolutely. The dumbest, dumbest strategy I've ever seen anyone employ, ever. It is absolutely killing your game. Fix it. All right, let's move on. In general, developers seem to be moving away from the old model of overprotecting their games and leaning more in the direction of tiny builds to see what data and consumer behavior can teach them to make it easier to turn pirates into paying customers. Although Although there's actually been plenty of research into how pirates spend their money, like the Ofcom study that found that on average, pirates spend more money than regular consumers. Uh, the trick seems to be just finding the right way to make it easiest for all the customers to purchase your game. And a company like TinyBuild making its data public could help other devs find a collective solution that pushes back against the practice of pirating. Or they could just, you know, come up with some mega awesome anti-cracking system that makes pirates quit, like Denuvo did earlier this year. That works too, you know, for like all of five minutes. Those are important five minutes. Oh, what do you guys think about Punch Club's enormous piracy numbers and Tiny Build's stance on piracy? Let us know in the comments. For all your future piracy updates and your aggressive DRM, like this video and subscribe to the now. Warning, you'll get all kinds of stupid pirate puns. Argyle. Like Argyle Fox. <laughs> and movies that are rated R.